Australia is a huge continent full of natural energy sources. Our sun, our wind, and we're surrounded by wild, wild oceans. And I'm studying how we can extract energy from our oceans to help power our future. Hi, I'm Richard. Here at Swinburne University, we're using this wave channel to help find some answers. Wave energy converters turn the motion of waves into electricity we can use to power our homes. But to get wave energy converters to work, we need to know just how much power they can generate. To understand wave energy conversion, we need to do an experiment. And we can do that right here. This is our wave channel. It's like a long fish tank filled with water where a machine generates waves, modeling the ones in the ocean. Thanks to a donation, we have a new computer controlled wave maker, which can be adjusted to make waves bigger or more frequent. And we look through glass panels to see how the water behaves. So let's see an example of a wave energy converter. First, we figure out how deep the tube should be so that the water inside bobs up and down at the same rhythm as the waves outside it. Then, we lower this tube into the water. When we look inside the tube, we see that the water is bobbing up and down higher than the waves around it. This is called resonance. Energy has been taken from the wave outside and concentrated inside. Water in the tube then pushes the air above it through a turbine, generating electricity. It's difficult to calculate how high the water inside the tube will bob up and down. So it's hard to know what power we would actually get. So we do the experiments and the maths to help find out. If we can predict the height of the water in the tube, we can predict the actual power that is generated. This could allow engineers to extract wave energy from the ocean and deliver it to our homes. So when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining, maybe the oceans will come to our rescue. <laughs>